a good day dawns. Who among us can say that we completely understand the nature of the mind, of our mind, or of the mind? Wow, look at the green. Look at the rays of light. So much life. I want to get to know that mind. I certainly would never want to do anything to harm that mind. And harmed... Our mind loses the capacity... to make as good a use or as harmless a use as possible. Of information from our environment, including our thoughts, emotions, and perceptions. And this is a form of aggression too. A diminished capacity to correspond with our environment. And immerse as we are in a world that fails to correspond as much as it does to have instituted, in fact, prohibitions against the kind of correspondence that is so native to a child. How are we to know what is a reasonable way of corresponding with the world around us? When I don't understand something, two possibilities exist. Either it is explicable or it is in inexplicable. And so somewhere in the regions of what we place in the realm of inexplicable are things that are explicable that we just don't understand. And, furthermore, may have an aversion to understanding, as though for our own safety. And this is kind of the abnormal arrest in the mental machinery, if you will, that is precipitated by being subjected to people who or to a culture that doesn't appreciate or is not willing to understand or is averse to understanding the actual needs of a child, deprived, as that culture is, of the full value of the nature of its own mind. We can only respect the mind as much as we are possessed or animated or impelled by the understanding of our mind. We need life to converse with life. We need a sufficient capacity for life to have a sufficient capacity for knowledge, which is life. <clears throat> so many of the medicines that people find to assuage the kinds of illness, 
irritations, compulsions, and anxieties that beset most of us at some point during our lives. Um, some of which are used to try to gain greater knowledge. And certainly, an aspiration to gain greater health and peace of mind is an aspiration to gain greater knowledge, a greater conscious capacity for life. And for the enjoyment of life, we deeply sense we deserve, else we would not suffer as much as we do. And ideally, the cellular structure of a family and of the invisible, invisible psychology and immuno immuno immunological functions, that is, psychologically and biologically immunological functions of a family, a society, a body. Morning, Kelly. Hey, dude. Yeah, hey. It's hot. Oh, good. Early. It's about time, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is good. Um, it's very hard to foist upon a child, and we all start off as children, obviously, um, trying to resolve the kinds of challenges to one's health when so many of the forces that speak so much to our well-being or not are extraneous to our own person. It's a very unfortunate circumstance. When a family or society works well, it is essential. And it builds and enjoys a level of mental development which, in which I include, you know, coordination of emotion and uh, body and limb that enriches that culture to no end and builds and maintains uh, very poignant, pertinent, and relevant uh, filters and barriers to the kinds of imbalances that we see today. And this can only happen by deriving the full value of life, life alone, which resolves all positive and negative energies into the most helpful or life-enhancing processes or homeostasis and so forth. We, we always do have a homeostasis, we just don't necessarily have the optimal one. And mitigating for the optimal one, of course, is a lot of different re-standardizations of what is normal and uh, what we see as explicable and inexplicable. You know, a lot of science goes about trying to understand the universe, possessed though we are of an aversion to gaining the full value of, of many things that you don't need a science to learn about. So, science, like many of the medicants that we apply to our own ignorance, suspect, as rightly as we do, that our ignorance precipitates suffering in many cases. These medicants and sciences uh, are not necessarily the most helpful thing to our minds, though they can feel like it in every way. And that's a different... It's a very difficult cycle to break for all of us. Um, for every family that I've met that have issues of neglect or drug addiction, I've met a family who's utterly convinced that their entire way of being is something worth protecting. The pain of any changes to which are tantamount to a threats to their family and to their way of life. Indeed, all suffering is a threat to our way of life. And so this tendency to perpetuate the causes of our own suffering in order to ameliorate our suffering um, is a very natural, but a very unfortunate uh, response that has become codified into a lot of different branches of our society. And I do emphasize that it is understandable and that none of us are immune to this um, because our first instinct is to want to at least to restore some kind of balance to our lives whatever, by whatever means possible. And of course we're going to want to justify whatever means necessary um, 
But this uh, sort of recapitulation of, of violence on top of violence to ourselves or anyone else will tend to inhibit um, what we deem explicable and relevant in terms of all the information that lay around us. And groups of people will tend to gravitate to groups of people who share uh, similar sets of values about what is explicable and inexplicable, what is relevant and irrelevant. And again, that's, that's very natural. Um, and it's also quite common among the different groups to find um, taboos on uh, levels of communication or interaction that might admit um, unresolved issues among any of us and within any of us and this can often be the reason why people appear as though they just don't want to understand something and people who seem normally quite inquisitive and open-minded um, averse to applying that curiosity to a certain ranges of information presented to them and uh, that's unfortunate um, needless to say our society is filled with many different kinds of drugs some of which are deemed more helpful than others and they can often have uh, a very helpful if detrimental effect upon our minds sometimes opening certain capacities at the expense of others. Um, the idea that I would apply to health, particularly of the mind, is not so much that we need to open the mind or restore certain functions to the mind, but to restore proportionality to the mind, because we don't really understand the mind, most of us. If I did fully understand the mind, I wouldn't suffer, because I'd be possessed of the full value of the nature of my own mind in a world where nobody needs to suffer. So, the mind needs access, best I know, to information that speaks to the kinds of proportions, the different organs of the mind, which are quite beyond our ken, so that they function properly. And how we know that they have a proper function, of course, most of the time is that we encounter improper function in one another. And we feel that acutely. So just opening certain functions of the mind is not sufficient to restore the whole function of the mind. The education system opens certain functions of the mind, but by no means uh, disposes one to be possessed of the full nature of one's mind. It's all about proportion, living proportions. So different substances in our society, whether they be foods or other medicants, whether they be indigenous or synthetic um, can or cannot restore can or cannot restore certain functioning to the mind but I don't think I think very few of us understand the conditions in, in which uh, these things will restore whole function to the mind or will fail to restore certain functions at without being at the expense of others and this is something that falls to all of us because we really don't have very much of an idea of what a normal mind would behave like and so this is an art and a science that falls to very private levels of human decision and volition and volition and uh, I really respect that that project that we're on to restore our capacity for the nature of our own minds and for a life alone worthy of the kinds of lives we aspire to, to try to claim something of the value of an economy, economy of health and intelligence rather than the economy of disease mediated by more disease and more psychosis and more aversion, however helpful, to levels or strata of information, however inexplicable they may seem at certain times in our life that are worth um, considering. 
beautiful day and all I know is that getting some oxygen and sunlight and some exercise um, though not an exhaustive number uh, not an exhaustive list of uh, the elements that I need for my own health they're not a bad set of ingredients to begin with in fact I find that what I put into my mind is just as important as what I restrain myself from putting into it as much as possible and I've tried different things and I like to think I've gotten some good advice from people who best that I know are in some great possession of the nature of their mind which is not a lot of people and that's a very personal determination for any of us to make what a gorgeous day it's worthy of every dimension of a human being. Be safe.